ain't gonna apologize for it because God did it for me. Sit down, folk can't be see nothing behind you. They're, they're mad. They're, I wish you'd sit down. I can't even see the preacher. God did it for me. God did it for me. And any time that you are hated, any, any time that you are abandoned, any time that you are betrayed, it is a sign that God has marked you. He has destined you for greatness. He has sovereignly set you apart and let you survive all of it. Because you do understand that there are other people that didn't even go through half what you went through. And they are not still here to tell about it. The very fact that you are here ought to be a sign to you that it is the Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If you wonder what a survivor feels like, just shake my hand. Shake, shake my hand. I am a survivor. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Children of Israel were survivors. They worked for 400 years for nothing. For 400 years, they worked like a dog without a penny's restitution. For 400 years, y'all, y'all hear me? For 400 years, they were never compensated for their work. This damaged their psyche almost to the point where it nearly immobilized them. They are suffering from the imbalances of slavery. And in the middle of all of that, they lose their dignity and they lose their direction and they lose their sense of purpose because slavery is dehumanizing. They were, a, they were a captive people. They were a nation of slaves that desperately needed an emancipator. That these were the people of God, yes, but they were going through great pain. And any time the enemy inflicts great pain on the people of God, it is just a setup because God is about to release great substance. When those ridiculous, unrelenting attacks of the enemy start beating up against your life, it is only a sign that God is about about to release an unstoppable victory in your face right in your face God is and if you walk with God long enough you'll start recognizing the signs that God is offering you another level in your spirit see I know when God is getting ready to offer me another level because you know, when that breaks out and you fix it and it's okay, and, and that breaks out and you fix it and it's okay, and that breaks out and you fix it and it's okay, but then all of a sudden everything breaks out at one time. All you can do is throw up your hands and say, What the word? Oh, but I've learned something. Now I stand back and say, hey, wait a minute. I know what this is all about. I see you coming. I see the blessing of the Lord that is about to overtake my life. And you can tell how blessed you're going to be by on tomorrow by the hell that you are having to go through today. Because the Bible said if the thief be caught, he must return back to you sevenfold. Hit your neighbor. Tell him the mother load is mine. The mother load is mine. The mother load belongs to me God told Abraham sit down he said I'm going to bring them out I'm going to bring them out with great substance the deliverance of Israel was a settled fact God would make their enemy bless them however he said before I make them bless you I'm going to make them hate you he was forewarning them so that they would understand that there was purpose to their oppression. There was purpose to their injustice. There was purpose to the slavery. There was purpose to the opposition. There was purpose to their pain. He was letting them know, this is not an accident. I am going to give you pain, but I'm giving it to you on purpose. See, I can deal with, with pain that has purpose, but I can't deal with that purposeless pain. That, that's where I got a problem. See, pain, if you're expecting pain is nature's alarm clock to a mother. It lets you know, I need to move somewhere and get in a place of expectation because I'm about to give birth to something. There is pain behind, uh, there is purpose behind that pain. But God said, listen, he said, I am going to emancipate them. But before I do that, he said, tell them I'm going to turn their world inside out and upside down. Tell them I'm going to rock everything I can rock and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Tell them all hell, not some hell. Oh, anybody ever had all hell? He 
said, tell them I'm going to turn Pharaoh's heart against them. But tell them not to panic because this is just a test. And I'm going to show them how to use their faith. I'm going to show them how to, how, through their trouble, how to use their faith. So God did exactly what he said he was going to do. He hardened the heart of Pharaoh. You know the story. God uh, sent, speaks to Moses. Moses goes down there, tells Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh says, who is your God that I should listen to you? And he said, who are you anyway talking to me like that? Get out my face. Moses is now facing a furious Pharaoh. And Pharaoh turns to the slave master. And he says, I know we've been supplying the straw for them to build the bricks. But I'm going to stop doing that. And, and, and I want you to make them get their own straw. And then I want you to keep their productivity quota the same. I want you to load them down, in other words. And I want you to make them sweat. Look at what's happening to the people of God. It seems so unfair. It seems like things are getting worse rather than getting better but you need to keep in mind that in the middle of it all God is still right there and don't be surprised when things get worse before they get better that does not mean that God is not in it things got worse for Joseph before they got better things got worse for Job and for Daniel and for Hannah and for Paul things got worse for Jesus before they got better somebody in here tonight needs to know that just because like, things look like they're getting worse rather than getting better that does not mean that God has forsaken you or that God has forgotten you I don't care how hard the winds are blowing I don't care how loud the thunder is crashing you've got to remind yourself that God is on my side he is in my corner and he's here to deliver me he ain't coming he is here Jehovah Shabbat he's here right now and he's here to deliver me tell your neighbor God is gonna bless me it might not look like it and I might not feel like it but I want to say to you that these light afflictions which are but for a moment work for us a far greater exceeding eternal weight of glory and you might think I should just curse God and die but why would I curse him and die when I can bless him and live? No, thank you. I wait on the Lord for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew this. I'm going to wrap my mind up in prayer. I'm going to wrap my mind up in praise because I don't care what Pharaoh does. I believe that I am on the verge of the greatest breakthrough I have ever. Some of us are so close. We can smell it. Because while we've been going through hell, God has been stirring up a blessing. Tell your neighbor, I smell the victory. Wait on your blessing. Sit down. God said, I'm going to make them hate you. Then I'm going to make them bless you. I'm going to use that same Pharaoh. The one that don't like you, I'm going to turn around and make him give you favor. I'm going to take that same boss I don't want to let you off on Sunday for church. And I'm going to make him bless you. Because he said, I will give this people favor. And anytime you got favor, you got access. Access to stuff you shouldn't have. Access to things you shouldn't have, things you didn't work for, things you're not educated enough for, things you can't explain. All you know is favor got it for you. Have you got anything in your life that you know favor got it for? Tell your neighbor, it wasn't number favor, favor got it for me. Favor. You're working a job you know you ain't educated enough to have. You're living in a house you shouldn't own. You're driving a car you're not qualified for. But tell a favor got it for me. I'm in a place of favor and I didn't have to kiss up to nobody to get there. I didn't have to sleep with nobody to get there because the heart of the king is in the hand of God and he turns it like he wants it to tell your neighbor, I got favor. He told the children of Israel, he said, I'm getting ready to bless you. I'm going to favor you. And he said, watch out because I'm getting ready to send a transfer to your, your, up in your direction. He said, I've been laying up treasures. I've been taking the wealth of the wicked and putting it in a place till I could transfer it over to the hands of the righteous. 
Those that have clean hands and pure hearts. Those that have clean hands and pure hearts. I know your hands have been weary, but God said, hold on, because I'm about to drop something into your weary hands. Like Ruth, you're about to stumble up on your blessing. You're about to find yourself in a field. You don't even know who the owner is. You're just there. You're blessing, blessing. Blessing is all around your life. You don't know that he's standing outside the window looking at you. Tell your neighbor your blessing has spotted you. Your blessing has spotted you. Boaz was looking out the window and he saw Ruth. He said, who is that? His right-hand man said, that's Ruth. He, that, that's the daughter-in-law uh, of Naomi. Oh, uh, Boaz said, hey, that's my kinfolk. Tell them guys, I said, don't touch her. Look at God. Now she's up under divine protection. And he said, tell him, I said, to leave us some handfuls on purpose. Now she's got divine provision. She's just out there. Don't even know what God has done for her. I wonder what God has done for you that you don't know nothing about. He said, I tell him I said to, to pull down the harvest and, and drop it in her face. Just drop it all. I don't even want her to have to reach up and pull this one down. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you ain't got to work for this next blessing. God's going to let it fall into your hand. You better hear me tonight. Tell somebody something getting ready to fall into my hands. God is getting ready to transfer some treasure into your hands. The closer they got, the closer they got, the more the oppression. The closer they got to freedom, the more the oppression. Sit down, I'm tired of telling you all that now. The more they got, the closer they got to freedom, the more they're oppression began to increase see trouble ought to tell you something I, I said trouble ought to tell you something when trouble is at its worst it's just a sign that God's getting ready to be at his best God said I'm gonna get you out but before I get you out he said I got to take you into a tight place oh, hence the Bible said God led the people around by the wilderness to the Red Sea they followed the cloud by day they followed the pillar of fire by night until it led them into the victory till it led them into their freedom via a tight place has anybody in here beside me ever found yourself in a living in a tight place working in a tight place praising from a tight place worshiping from a tight place it's uncomfortable but a tight place is part of the process and we must understand the process we must understand that there are times that I must go through this in order to get that whatever cup the father gives you I want to suggest to you that you drink that cup you see that is the secret to success you got to swallow the process it might be bitter but it has got to be swallowed God has led them into a tight place he has led them into the process he has led them into Baal Zephyr what in the world is Baal Zephyr Baal Zephyr was a perfect geographical cul-de-sac Look at God. Done led his people right into a dead end. Done led them straight into the jaws of a predicament. Now they are hemmed in on every side. To the north are enemy fortresses. To the south is the desert. To the east is the Red Sea. To the west is Goshen. Goshen represents the place where they came from. Goshen represents their past. And I may not know where I am going, but I do know where I am not going. Tell somebody, I ain't going back. They are surrounded. They are boxed in with no back door. They are cornered in a cul-de-sac. God has led them into a vulnerable place. He has led them into a place where there is no way of human escape. And 
it was out of that place that the sons of Israel began to cry unto the Lord. See, there is something about trouble that'll make you cry. Something about trouble that'll make you holler. It'll make you do things you said you would never do. Enough trouble will make an atheist say, oh God. They are in a tight place. They can hear the enemy hot on their trail. They can hear the enemy coming up behind them. They can hear the enemy chasing them. It's a scary thing when what you just got out from comes chasing up behind you. It's a scary thing when you hear the sounds of your past trying to overtake your future. They are trapped between the devil and the deep red sea. They are in an inescapable dilemma. But God, somebody shout God. God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God, God. is going to get you out of this. I don't know who that was to, but I came to tell somebody, God's going to get you out of it. They can hear the horses, the chariots, gods. All right, I'm going to get you out, but number one, you can't fear. Oh, yeah, right. Thank you. You got to be kidding me. I mean, we are cornered in a cul-de-sac. Our enemies are just around the corner. They got chariots and horses and bows and arrows and spears, and, and you want me to fear not. I mean, can we just be real? Can we? Can we? And if that ain't crazy enough, the second thing he says to them, he said, I want you to stand still. He said, I want you to resist the urge to move in your flesh. All of your self-help efforts have got to just 